G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are doing another team focus video ahead of the 2024 draft. I've gone ahead and plucked a few teams here and there where I think the story with them is a little bit interesting. So today doing the Bulldogs, again, another team that is interesting. I do find myself saying that a lot about teams. Maybe every team is just interesting, but the Bulldogs in particular are a team around whom I think there might be some misconceptions about where their list is at for a start. And they're also a team that I sort of observe to be quite top heavy and bottom heavy. So in this video, we're gonna go through what their depth kind of looks like and ultimately help inform us in terms of trying to forecast what they might do in this year's draft and what their philosophy might be. Compared to some of the other teams I've done individual videos on, I've done the Saints and I've done the Ds and Richmond, of course, the Bulldogs are picking a little bit later in the draft. It currently have pick 17, which might fall to around 20 on the night. So in terms of predicting accurately who they're gonna draft, it obviously gets a little bit harder later in the draft, but there are some nice options here and I do wanna go through what sort of players they might be looking at. When I said misconceptions around their list, I have done a video earlier this year talking about where they are at in the premiership cycle. And I also talked about them in a video where I discussed every team where they're at in the premiership you know, window, so to speak. I think a lot of what I said in the first video I did was in response to this, this belief or this narrative that the Western Bulldogs should be winning premierships at the moment, where their list is at. You know, Again, to, to quote Kane Corns, he talks about the Bulldogs having this list that should be winning the premiership or at least be in contention and that Luke Beveridge has been failing. What I said in a previous video was that I kind of felt that that might have been a little bit misguided on the basis that where I think the, a huge concentration of the Western Bulldogs talent is actually in their under 25 group. And on top of that, it's spearheaded by a very good top end midfield, many of whom are like 29 or all older. So we're sort of gonna get into what they might do with this draft. And flowing on from that thought, I mean, sometimes you hear in the media, um, you know, in terms of pre-draft analysis, that the talk is, you know, how is this draft gonna propel a team into premiership contention or will it help them take the next step and win a prelim or win a grand final? I suppose in this video and some of the work I've done in preparation for it, my belief is probably that for the Western Bulldogs specifically, this has nothing to do with their immediate premiership or top four ambitions in 2025 and beyond. As far as I'm concerned, that, that's more of a, a trade period sort of conversation. In terms of the draft, for me, it's adding to the layer of talent that they've been adding over a number of years now. They've had really good access to the draft, partly through good trading. I mean, they did that trade with the Gold Coast Suns that ultimately landed them Riley Sanders. There has been some luck with Academy and Father Son. Jordan Crawford's a first rounder, Sam Darcy, Jamari Hugo Hagen. Regardless, it is what it is. And I think the Bulldogs boast a very strong under 25 group or 25 and under. So Ed Richards, Aaron Norton, and anyone younger. And therefore, I think their philosophy throughout this draft would be to supplement some of the guys that they've drafted in recent times. So you guys like Riley Sanders. And it's less so about adding a key part of their best 23 that is going to help achieve premiership success in 2025. So let's let's get into the analysis here. And what I've done for every other team is chuck up Fox Footy's best 23. Bearing in mind, I know these aren't always great. There's always some sort of criticism with it, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll, we'll map it out there and then talk about some depth options here. So for the Western Bulldogs, you've got a fairly balanced team here and, and it's very strong in terms of tools. And I think the addition of Rory Lobb to that back line and him sort of reinventing himself as a tall intercept defender has been a great move, not only for his career, uh, but for the Bulldogs team balance as well, because it was a very very talented tall forward line and now you've got Sam Darcy who you know just had an outstanding season and looks to be an elite key position talent so starting with the talls James O'Donnell Lobb Jones you know that's a fairly solid back three trio and in particular that forward line with Norton Hugo Hagen and Sam Darcy I mean as far as talls go in addition to Tim English I know there's some mixed opinions around Tim English he is an old Australian ruckman I don't think he had the best year this year but nonetheless as far as talls go they're, they're pretty sweet in terms of their midfield like I said the top end punch there is outstanding with Liberatore, Adam Trelaw, and Bontempelli. I suppose the elephant in the room there for them is that uh, Trelaw and Liberatore, even though they're still playing well, and Trelaw probably just had his career best season, they are on the wrong side of 30. And that's not so much relevant to, you know, the Bulldogs' 2025 season. This is not so much what this video is going to be focusing on, their immediate hopes. But for me, it is very material to this conversation of how they go about the draft, is the age of that midfield. Some other really quality small types, I mean, Ed Richards is an absolute gun. Uh, Cody Waitman, I think, is a really good young small forward. And as you look at the Matt Kennedy introduction there, I, I think... It it makes perfect sense why they've recruited him. Obviously, Jack McRae went the other way. Bailey Smith obviously went to Geelong as well. And, and that's an interesting part here as well, because when I said that this list is top heavy 
and bottom heavy. I think that's become more and pronounced when you take out Bailey Smith, who I think is a prodigious talent. And okay, we don't need to labor on that fact. It's a video about the Bulldogs, but it is nonetheless one less very good player in their prime that has now left the list. And suddenly, even though McRae was, you know, played out of position and dropped, even though the same thing was true of Smith before he did his ACL, I do think Kennedy now presents as a pretty important part of their midfield depth as well. So again, this isn't so much about, you know, how capable is that 23 of winning the premiership next year? We're talking about the, the general list build here. So to talk about some depth options they have across the field with particular focus on talls, um, you know, Jed Buzzlinger is a, is a good young key back prospect taken in the first round a couple of years ago. Hasn't cracked a game yet, but as, as next man in, that's at least some evidence that they've got some depth. There's also Ryan Gardner as a defensive option there. You've got Jordan Croft. I, I believe he played most of this year in the VFL looking at his stats sheet and obviously didn't follow his season in particular, but it looks like he's playing forward, but behind Darcy, Norton and Jamara, I think it's safe to say the Bulldogs are very well equipped for talls at the moment, which again sort of informs what they might do in this year's draft. Their immediate need for talls is not very high, um, save for perhaps Ruck. So you got Tim English in the team um, and they drafted Lockie Smith last year. And besides that, obviously Sam Darcy, can pinch hit in the in the ruck. You think he's primarily a forward now. Rory Lobb does he spend much time rucking? Probably not. So I think broadly speaking, like another ruck option would be ideal. Does it need to be in this year's draft? Well, you let me know in the comments there, Bulldogs fans. I'm not 100% convinced. I think perhaps a state league mature option could be something to add in case there's an injury. I don't know to what extent someone like a Lockie Smith is ready for serious AFL minutes next year. But we'll park the ruck talk as we get into their specific picks. We talked about that midfield. I mean that midfield on that field that I, that was named there is very strong. Uh, but outside the team, now, you know, with Bailey Smith gone, with Jack McRae gone, and admittedly with uh, Matthew Kennedy coming into the team, outside of that 23, you've got, you know, Riley Garcia, Oscar Baker, uh, Caleb Poulter. With Riley Sanders being named in that team, to me, I actually think there is going to be an appetite for more midfield talent with this Western Bulldogs group. If you, if you consider the fact that this draft has got to be about supplementing the under 25 talent, that under 25 midfield, really need some bolstering. And we'll get into the specifics around their pick because it may not be that simple. There may not be a clear midfield prospect for them lined up at that first selection. And then you look at general defenders and general forwards. Um, in terms of their depth, the guys that are not named in that team, you know, Hannison, Buku Karmas, Nick Coffield, and Luke Cleary. Caleb Daniel has obviously left as well. So is there a need for another general defender, perhaps, you know, particularly a, a quick and rebounding one? You, you won't necessarily find another Caleb Daniel. He's a fairly unique player. But generally speaking, could they use another medium running defender potentially if the price is right? And as far as general forwards go, that not named in that team, you got Arthur Jones, Lockie McNeil, Anthony Scott. Could they use another small forward? I know they just delisted Charlie Clark. He was a prospect I really liked in the draft. I haven't followed his career since then. But another partner in crime for Cody Waitman could be an option. And the reason I highlight that is because there could be a couple of good small forward options available at that first selection. So to summarize everything I've just said there so far, Definitely all sweet for key forwards. I cannot imagine there's a need to draft a key forward in this year's draft. It, it may be the best under 25 glut of key forward talent in the competition. I think they're pretty sweet for talls down back. I mean, obviously Liam Jones is not a young man anymore, but James O'Donnell, I think, is a pretty good talent. Same thing with Jed Buzzlinger. Yes, he's unproven, but I, I don't think there's a clear need to draft another key back. So what I think is on the agenda is best available small talent, whether that be midfield. I think midfield with their first selection is an ideal scenario. It just depends who's available. Small forward, yes. General defender, yes. These are probably the types we're going to be looking at with these selections. The midfield in particular is top heavy. And that's why I said like Kennedy coming in makes perfect sense. Now you've got 29 year old Bont, or he'll be 29 next year. No, he'll be 30 next year. So that kind of helps the point. Um, and true Lord Liberatore. And then, you know, you've got Riley Sanders, who I really rate and no concerns about him being a good footballer at the next level. With Bailey Smith gone, suddenly that prime age midfielder, you've got Kennedy, you've got Harms, but I think Building a midfield around Riley Sanders or, you know, similar talents to bolster that is probably an ideal scenario for the Western Bulldogs. It doesn't help that they're only picking at 17, but they were pretty unlucky it was Geelong that Bailey Smith went to in the end. So let's get into their actual draft picks. So we've got 17, 25, 35, and 48. And like I said, the, the further the picks are back, the harder it is to know who's going to be available. And some of the picks that they take later will be contingent on how the first few picks go. But let's go pick by pick. Bearing in mind, there will be some exclusions I'd make for the Western Bulldogs. Like, 
I cannot imagine a world where they draft either of the Whitlock twins, for instance, you know, Job Shanahan with their first selection, if he if he's even there. Probably doesn't make sense as a key forward, even if he's a little bit undersized. There's Jonty Fall. I think I'm going to go ahead and just say, like, you can probably pull out a lot of these tall options around the range of their selections is not suitable for the Western Bulldogs. So who is suitable and also realistic? Let's go to pick 17. So like I said, if there is a midfielder available here, I think that is an ideal scenario for the Bulldogs. But I'm an Eagles fan, and I know that what is currently pick 12 is a chance that all the midfield applicable talent is gone. So then it kind of becomes a best available type scenario here for the Bulldogs. Could they? Could, could Xavier Lindsay last that long? You know, to be honest, I hope not, because that means West Coast has overlooked him. I suppose, that, is there a scenario, and I don't know if this is being discussed amongst Bulldogs fans, is there any appetite to trade up into that type? Top, say dozen picks with potentially combining like 17 and 35 if there is a good midfielder like if it gets to for example west coast pick 12 and xavier Lindsay's there could 17 and 35 be a worthwhile trade to move up as a west coast fan i hate that but what i'm saying is is there is there an appetite amongst fans for that to happen but accepting the fact that xavier Lindsay's probably not going to get to the western bulldogs here let's talk about some other options I think it is entirely conceivable that Taj Hotton is available at their selection. Now, I've done a whole individual video about Taj, and I think very high-level talent obviously did an ACL this year. And with that ACL, there is a chance he slides to the Bulldogs pick. And I think for a talent basis, the fact that he can play midfield, and at the very worst, he might just be a very good medium forward. I think this would be a great outcome here for the Western Bulldogs. Bearing in mind, there is a downside of his ACL, but when you're picking towards the end of the first round, there is always going to be some sort of caveat. And the same thing applies to Murphy Reed. I don't know how realistic it is Murphy gets here. I've seen very divisive opinions on Murphy. There seems to be a suggestion that, you know, top dozen is his range. But you read on some other media outlets or independent content creators who think his lack of height and leg speed might preclude him from being a genuine midfielder. So there's that caveat. But with the Bulldogs in particular here, like I said, there's going to be a caveat on any midfield prospect that has lasted this long. So with that in mind, could Murphy Reed be a good selection for them? I think it is entirely possible he gets there. I probably would prefer Taj Hotton for the Bulldogs. You probably won't see him at AFL level in his first season, but I think he has the running capacity, the X factor to really make an impact at AFL level when he gets the opportunity. There's a bunch of other talents as well. There's Cooper Hines. Maybe this pick is a little earlier than people are expecting it to go, but he is actually a genuine midfielder. He's a bit more content focused inside but he also floats forward and, and takes marks and is a good aerial marking threat so as far as midfield options go he's amongst this group as being best available you could then look at small forwards if, if none of those options tickle your fancy there's a couple here that i think would be suitable and not reaches at the bulldogs first pick one of them is joe berry he could form a fairly good do i i think with cody waitman in that they are pretty different players i think joe berry presents much more as a small high half forward than he is a close to goal scoring sort of small forward now he does absolutely hit the scoreboard but he's got that versatility and I think that could form a pretty good one-two punch here and it is possible that he, he gets to the Bulldogs pick even if you know there's been some links to Port Adelaide and Fremantle at the moment that is just con conjecture but I think Ollie Hannaford as much as I would hate to see him not drafted by West Coast I think Ollie Hannaford would be an outstanding selection here for the Bulldogs I do think there is some midfield applicable talent there the caveat on him is probably twofold the fact that you know he, he sort of shot onto the scene late in this season so it wasn't this long-standing body of work where he was a proven quantity he just had an outstanding end of the year in the Coates Talent League kicked bags of five he kicked a bag of six in a qualifying final and then you know played predominantly in the midfield in the grand final and he put together an outstanding game I think he had like eight clearances so if you're looking for somebody who ticks the box of being dynamic small forward to start who can impact as a run through midfielder I think Ollie Hannaford would be a great selection here for the Bulldogs if he was available here another one is Tom Gross but I'm not sure if Tom Gross really comes into calculations with this pick whilst there is a need for a midfielder. In my opinion, there is a talent gap between Joe Berry and Ollie Hannaford and say a Tom Gross. So if you had the choice of all three, Tom Gross probably would be ideally there at 25, which might become like 28 on the actual night. Of course, there is a very real risk that he doesn't get there. Now let's move to that 25. Let's just call it 25 for now. So there's a couple of wingman types that I like here for the Western Bulldogs. Now they did draft Frazier and that seems to be a success. Maybe I was a little misguided in my phantom drafts of assuming they'd go for a midfielder simply because Aiden O'Driscoll retired, right? That being said, there are still two good quality ones here available in Christian Moraes and Hamish. Davis. Now, Christian Moraes has the higher profile and he's considered higher ranked, but in my opinion, there is actually quite a lot of similarity between these two prospects. Both hard running outside goal kicking wingmen types. But I do think, you know, who they pick with their second selection is going to be contingent on who they picked it with their first. So, for instance, 
Someone like a Jesse Totoli would be a good small forward option for them if he's available at this selection, which I think is somewhat realistic. But you don't go Jesse Totoli if you've drafted Ollie Hannaford or perhaps even Joe Barry. If we're talking general defenders, I think there's some good ones available here. Harrison Oliver could be a suitable type. Now, being a small defender who doesn't get a whole lot of the ball, I wonder if they'd hold off to 35 before having a look at someone like a Harrison Oliver. But he is a very good player, so that's that's a tough one. You'd throw him in as a contender here, but probably not the first cab off the rank in terms of options here. Well, let's talk about Luke Trainer and Alex Dodson. So just to throw a little bit of variety into the mix here, you've got Luke Trainer as a tall intercepting defender and Alex Dodson as a ruck. I know that the Bulldogs, and this is a point I've made several times in this video, probably don't need to go tall. But in the hypothetical scenario where Luke Trainer is still there at pick 28, where the Bulldogs are picking here, do you take him? Because I think on talent, it makes sense. Now, again, there's a big elephant in the room with this concussion stuff. And, and to be honest, I don't really know where that sits. And if there is a big red flag on that, then, you know, maybe the Bulldogs don't take him either. But if it's purely a talent thing, could Luke Trainer add something different to what the Bulldogs have? As more of an intercepting, damaging third tall, I think on talent, it wouldn't be the worst selection if they've nailed their first selection with a midfielder or small forward who can play a bit in the midfield like a Hannaford and a Berry. And on Dodson, tricky one. Probably not quite suitable for the Bulldogs, only because they have drafted a ruck already and there may just be some more suitable options here. If Dodson's available at 35 though, do you pull the trigger? He's the best rated ruck in this year's draft. Given there is probably a bit of a lack of, of young rucks on the list of the Bulldogs, I'm just putting it to you. What do you think about drafting the best rated ruck? And if he's there at 35, it would be a slide. Speculating too much past this in terms of 35 and 48 more extensively is tricky, but I think broadly speaking, the Bulldogs can diversify their selections, ideally get a midfielder here. Perhaps a goal kicking wingman is still on the agenda. Maybe there's still an appetite for that, but general forwards, general defenders, there's some good options here. Others would be Angus Clark, Lockie Jakes, and uh, Jack O or Jack Off. I've heard both pronunciations and I don't know who to trust. But yeah, th those are just some options for the Bulldogs to look here. So in summary, in an ideal world, they get a roll gold midfielder with pick 17. It's just that the, at that selection, there may not be some clear cut options, in which case I think best case scenario, it's Taj Hotton, to be honest, given that the Bulldogs are probably fancying themselves for top six, top four, perhaps beyond. I don't think there's the same need to get an 18 year old prospect on the park as soon as possible. I think they're in a position where they can be patient provided the talent is right. And I do think the talent is right with Taj Hotton. I also think you couldn't go wrong with Ollie Hannaford. Like I said, I'm, I almost want the Eagles to pick him at 15, which is a massive reach at this point, but I think he would be a great selection for the Bulldogs. I do think he could actually play in his first season and potentially make the team better in his first year. But past that, probably looking at diversifying the options with a clear bias towards general defenders, medium forwards, that's probably the way I see it going. But let me know in the comments, uh, particularly Bulldogs fans or anyone watching this, what do you think the Bulldogs should do with this draft philosophy? Do you, do you agree with the general mapping out that I've done in this video of where I think they're at? Once again, I don't think this draft is about you know their immediate hopes for pushing into premiership contention. I think this is a longer term play to supplement that under 25 group, which I think has a whole stack of potential, but it probably needs an injection of midfield talent. But I've had my say, it's over to you. Let me know in the comments what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.